we lived in New York where I bumped into people I know all the time, but but um, the only people I bump into that I know are like at Stop and Shop now. <laughs> so so uh, Facebook, Facebook is a way for me to just, you know, let people know I'm still alive and still doing things yeah. and, and uh, happy to be here. Yeah. Well, you and well, Tina, yeah. you, you you guys are you're you're still you're still so cool, and you've really you've managed the transition over into the digital age quite beautifully. How did you uh, you know what is your recipe? You're really you're still just kind of all plugged in and really rocky and edgy. How do you guys do it? Well, gee, I I guess I don't know. We never really stopped, you know, and I yeah. I, I don't feel like I'm really on top of the whole entire social networking digital world mm -hmm. but but I, I'm getting there mm -hmm. slowly but surely uh, uh, Tina Tina um, uh, doesn't really partake in Facebook and um, uh, you know tweeting and stuff like that but <laughs> but she she's do, busy doing other stuff like writing songs yeah. <laughs> so that's good uh. I think, but no, I think you're there. I don't think you're almost there. You're totally there. You're like, you're really a fan favorite, you know? Um, well, thank you. Uh, you know, I, I do my best to, to stay on top of what's happening in the modern world. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I feel sometimes like an elder statesman in, you know, the business of rock and roll. Mm -hmm. But then again, uh, maybe, maybe that's not so bad. <laughs> No, not at all. So that, there you are in Connecticut, and that's kind of like, it's turning out to be a cool little undiscovered secret, isn't it? Of like, oh, when did that happen? When did Connecticut get so cool? Well, you know, it's been cool for, for a long time, actually. Yeah. Uh, this town where we are, for example, F. Scott Fitzgerald moved here mm -hmm. with Zelda when he was like 24 and she was 19. Oh, my gosh. Um, that was in 1920, mm -hmm. they, and uh, there were a lot of a lot of writers in this area, a lot of mu a lot of musicians as well, and um, of course back in those days it was jazz and like Broadway mm -hmm. stuff. Like behind me here is where Richard Rogers of Rogers and Hammerstein lived. No, really? Oh, oh, cool. You know that the the family that lives there now still has his piano. Mm -hmm. And uh, up the road is Keith Richards, and uh, over that way is Nile Rogers, you know, of Chic. Oh, so so cool. it's still kind of hip, but it, it, the problem is, uh, the problem with, with this community is sprawl, mm -hmm. and people build it, tearing down the, you know, the community is in danger of losing its flavor, because its New England flavor, because... People tear down these beautiful little salt box homes and build mm -hmm. a McMansion in its place, and it just kind of kills it. And they put up a big wall, yeah. you know, like as if they were in a trailer park. Oh, no, <laughs> no. And so it, it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it's really not so bad, but it, but I, it, the, the area is in danger of, of losing its New England, you know, the attributes that everybody loves so much. About yeah, I didn't know that. Maybe, you know, it's not that it's undiscovered, it's just that I'm out of it, because I've lived in Germany for 25 years, so maybe it's, it's to my benefit to, <laughs> to read once in a while, to tune yeah. into it. <laughs> you, you, you know how it is, like, like South by Southwest is going on right now yeah. in Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. and we, we've been down there for that a few times, but that town, which used to be terribly charming in, in that old Wild West way, that Willie Nelson way, mm. um, has now got skyscrapers and traffic jams. And yeah. So, so the, this, is, this is what we have to deal with here. We, I'm really big on historic preservation and, and planning, mm -hmm. you know, city planning. Uh, but maybe that's boring to your listeners. Maybe we should get into something, some more dish like oh, forget the listeners. It's what I want to hear. <laughs> okay. All right. No. So, yeah. Um, well, I was thinking about it here. I have a list over here of all your credits. And if I list them all, it'll eat up all the time. I mean, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, let's see. I was, yeah, I made a list. You, you're listed number 12 in Stylist Magazine's list of 50 greatest drummers of all time. And, you know, you and the bands that you've been in, you really have shaped, um, you know, young people's lives and you've influenced so many um, kids and adults. And so I was just wondering, what is it like to wake up and what's it like for you to be you when you wake up in the morning? What does that feel like? Well, um, most mornings I, it feels pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, th this morning I got up uh, uh, before anyone else and I made a pot of coffee and I went out and I got the Sunday Times. <laughs> I was hoping that there would be a, a review of Richard Hell's book. Yeah which I love, yeah. his new book, uh, but, but there wasn't, so uh, maybe it's coming next week or something. It, yeah, it's out now, right? It got, when was it? Yeah, it uh, came out on Tuesday, Tuesday and, okay. uh, it, we, uh, we went to the, Tina and I went to the, the party for his book, which was at this great bar in the East Village called the Bourgeois Pig. <laughs> and, <laughs> so it was, I think I said on Facebook, it was, a great party, like just like the old days, except with better wine. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I'm happy for Richard. Mm -hmm. uh, I like him a lot. Yeah, and uh, he, you know, he did a cameo in our most recent Tom Tom Club video, yeah. Down on Rockers, and he features in that song three times, both individually as a member of television and uh, as a member of the Heartbreakers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he was an important character, and I'm, I'm happy he's still alive and doing it, you know. And he looks great. He looks really good, doesn't he? He does. Yeah. He does. Uh, uh, all the ladies agree on that. <laughs> all the ladies. All the ladies are like, <laughs> Richard Hell. <laughs> you should have seen that. They were, he was fighting them all. Oh, my God. How old is he now? Is he 60? He must be 60-something, right? I think he's the same age as me, which is, yeah. let's say, early 60s. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. And we're both from Kentucky, so I, 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 I have a soft spot for him in that respect also. Yeah. You know, a lot of good artists come from Kentucky. Most of them leave and go someplace <laughs> else, but, um, but it's still a great place. Yeah, now you, you're you from a Navy family, right? You and Tina both had Navy... Well, I'm from an Army family. Oh, okay. Tina, Tina's father is, is a retired admiral. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're going down to visit him tomorrow in New Orleans. Oh, cool. So yeah. He's spending the winter. Yeah. Now, yeah. I don't... Do, you, do a lot of people realize that you all, that you and Tina and also David Byrne, that you graduated from RISD? Is that, like, known information? Because I didn't know that. That's... Oh, well, I, I think... A lot of people know we went there. I don't yeah. know if they, whether we graduated. Yeah. In fact, David did not graduate. David dropped out after the first year. Yeah. And uh, traveled around America for a while. And then, strangely enough, came back to Providence. And that's where he and I started the little band called The Artistics. Oh, okay. I'll put a picture in later. David Byrne, RISD dropout. <laughs> Underneath that. I'm sure. I like but that. Tina and I graduated. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, we had in 1974. Yeah. And then we moved to New York City because everybody knew at that time that New York City was like the center of the universe, especially yeah. for art. Yeah. And, um, and uh, David had moved there just a little bit ahead of us. And when we got there, we started a band and we named it Talking Heads. Mm hmm. I'm sorry, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now what? Well, okay. So you and Tina graduated. How did your families feel when you graduated RISD? And it's so difficult to get in there. You know, you, it's isn't it? It's a really complicated well, process. Every, every kid there is pretty much the best, or was the best artist right. at his or her school. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, uh, it, it it's uh, still it's it's an excellent school. It's grown quite a bit mm -hmm. since we were there, but. I, I'm always happy to uh, recommend it. Yeah. Well, did so. How did your families feel when you had your, you graduated from RISD and then you kind of you really just moved into the music um, area? What did, did your families have any reactions that kind of tried to get you back over to I don't know doing artistic things, not being in a rock band? Um, you know, uh, 
I think they did have some trepidation, mm -hmm. but but fortunately for everybody concerned, we had we got uh, like the third time we performed, we got our picture on the cover of the Village Voice, uh -huh. thanks to James Walcott, yeah, who wrote the article, mm -hmm. and um, and 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 then shortly after that, the New York Times did a, a small feature, and and so I could. I could show that to my parents and say, see, things are promising, maybe not so bad. And, and, and my parents actually, and Tina's parents too, were among our, our greatest supporters. Yeah. They, they really, they were really great. And um, we never had to ask them for money, so mm. that probably helped. Yeah. <laughs> helped them. They appreciated um, that. <laughs> they, they, they enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, immensely. I mean, they would come to our shows and uh, send us clippings that their friends had sent them. Stuff Aww. like that. Ah, uh, okay. Now, are you so? Now, the new CD has been out since um, October, right? The Downtown Rockers. Uh huh. Yeah. It, well, it, in 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 uh, I guess Germany and Europe, mm -hmm. uh, it it just came out last week in Japan. <gasps> really. It's, yeah, oh. and we're going to Japan in May. Yeah, May, 15, oh, cool. May uh, I think the concert is the concerts in Tokyo are the twentieth and the twenty first. Oh, cool, good. Are you guys? Are you playing Europe at all in the summer? Also, well, we're we're booked to go to the UK for the All Tomorrow's Parties Festival, and also for some other festivals that I'm not supposed to mention until All Tomorrow's Parties. Uh, okay. Uh, sells out oh, all <laughs> but, right. and, and I'm waiting to hear about some some dates on the continent and hopefully Holland and <gasps> Germany and France oh that would oh how cool would that be oh then we yeah then we can do another one of these and we can do it in person that'd be cool yeah. um, I you know I was wondering too how did you how did you at such a young age how did you guys deal with your fame I mean it's unheard of it's an unheard of level of fame and you were just kids you guys were kids what were you 20 something like 25 uh, well uh, when, when we made our first record I think I was 26 yeah and um, how did we deal with it well pretty well mm. I mean um, we, we, we were very fortunate and our success was not like it was not like today where it's all or nothing. It, it kind of it kind of snowballed gradually. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tina. Yes. And, oh, and the Jack and Jill okay. magazine for Charlotte. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I, that was a little aside. <laughs> um, but our 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 success, uh, like the first album, sold about a hundred thousand copies, which was, you know, really good news for uh, in a small way. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was promising, but it wasn't like we sold a million copies mm -hmm. out of gate or something like that. So we had we had a chance to develop our uh, our our act, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, it was different back then than it is now. Mm -hmm. It was uh, you, you you could uh, you could be small for a while, and people felt like that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay to be sort of. A, a young band for a while. Well, you're such a, you seem like such a relaxed guy. Like your whole personality, you're very you're just very easy going, relaxed. So, you never it was never um a struggle to kind of process the fame level or anything. You just kind of just was it just was. I think it was a problem for David. Mm. Um uh, David, you know, being the front person in the band mm. and being a little bit less relaxed than me. Um by nature, uh, I think I think he might have had some issues with it, particularly uh, when you know things started happening, like uh, having his picture on the cover of Time magazine and things yeah. like that. Yeah, that wasn't exactly great for him or for the band. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's part of that's part of the deal. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, but uh, oh. What was I going to say? Oh, I was going to say I was very fortunate to have, uh, you know, Tina, mm -hmm. my, the love of my life, my <laughs> bride, uh, in the band with me. And we could do things with our old friends. And we've kept all of our old friends. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't like we moved on to some different 
strata of society. Or something. We're now lords and ladies, people. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I have met a few ladies, <laughs> but but um, the, the, you know, the the people that we went to school with, yeah. high school, college. People that we met in the early days of, at CBGB's, those those people are all still our friends, and we're we're still in touch with them. Yeah, and I think that's a that's a good thing is to keep in touch with the people that knew you when. Yeah, that's you know? true. Yeah, that's true. And the ones that you know, the friends who aren't in for the long haul, they kind of drop to the wayside anyway. So, well, do you do you and Tina ever think about uh, doing some kind of a docu film about your whole career history, or maybe a, a memoir or something? Because that would be cool. I, I am thinking it's sort of overdue, actually. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about the film, but uh, definitely a book. That'd be great. And, uh, I should get to work on that. Yes, Chris. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I have. I have some. I, ha I have a few sort of starts that I made, mm -hmm. a few pages written, which uh, I'm told are very promising. So I can, I should really follow through with that. Yeah. What What will it take to get? <laughs> what will it, What do you need to get a push in that direction? What can we do? <laughs> um. Well, you've done it. You've okay, already thank you. done. Thank you. That's right. Please note that I gave you the push. Um. You know, you live, how far do you, I, I wanted to ask you because it's also a recent and really important thing that you've done. You live pretty close to, how far are you from Newtown? Uh, is it like 30? Oh, well, I, I'm, I'm like uh, 15 miles. Oh, okay. So it's really close. How, it's really close. Yeah. How did the Newtown Kids Project come together? That was your and Tina's idea, right? Yours and Tina's. But, um, Tina and I were, were uh, like everybody else around here and, and worldwide, actually. Mm -hmm horrified by what happened yeah. there and um and uh you know the reason we moved here to connecticut the main reason was that we had one child and we're kind of planning to have another and we wanted to be uh in a place where they they had good public schools as opposed to new york where you, you, if you were like a uh, if you were one of our kids, you would probably be going to a private school in New York, you know. Mm -hmm. But we thought, well, if we go up to Connecticut, there'll be, you know, green grass, good public schools. The kids will kids will meet uh, other nice kids, you yeah. know. And that's why people, a lot of the people that lost, the, the children that lost their lives and the teachers that lost their lives, they, they were in Newtown for the same reason, mm -hmm. uh, a place that, that is supposedly safe, and uh, and it is very beautiful there. It's quaint, and yeah. so so, so uh, it was shocking, super shocking. And um, I got a call from uh, uh, Louise, who used to sit across the desk from Hilly Crystal at CBGB's. Mm -hmm. and she was like the manager of CBGB's for I don't know the last fifteen years before it closed something like that and Louise said look uh, we're trying to put together a recording of somewhere over the rainbow with the, some of the children from Sandy Hook school mm -hmm. the, uh, and, and Newtown and uh, would you and, and, and Tina be interested in helping in any way and I, I immediately said well we have a recording studio we're very close to Newtown we could do that yeah. for you Oh. So, so we did, mm -hmm. and uh, Ingrid Michelson was also involved. Yeah, um, who's a fiercely independent she's, artist. She's fantastic. I love her. Okay, cool. So, uh, uh, Ingrid was involved, uh, and she um, played the ukulele. Oh. And then we got our uh, one of our guys, Bruce Martin from Tom Tom Club, to overdub some additional ukulele. We we kept it very sparse and, mm. and very uh sweet yeah. the children were wonderful yeah. they just they just did a great job yeah. you can see uh the video on youtube it's uh, the children of newtown sing over the rainbow is what you have to punch in and it'll I've come seen up it. oh i've seen it yeah 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 there's a lot of really creepy crazy <laughs> stuff about newtown conspiracy stuff that is on YouTube and on the internet, but uh, 
if I, I recommend you just bypass that and go just, straight yeah, to just detach and ignore. <laughs> yeah. Well, you had um, you had a link on your Facebook page, um, Rachel Meadows' latest commentary on the uh, yeah, no, new that information. Was just yeah, it was yesterday. And then if you click on that link, and like you just said, there's so many weird and crazy comments um, it, after the thread, and I thought, oh boy. So I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, what changes can actually be made with the gun laws in the states, if any, and how long will it take? It's so weird to watch it from far away, like from Germany. And I just think, yeah. is the yeah. USA, yeah. it's just going to cave in its, on itself. I don't know. So, I know. I, I, our country is very divided about yeah. this. Um, uh, I don't know. I think I, I think the lawmakers just have to shove it down people's throats, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, you know mm -hmm. whether they like it or not. No, you don't need the Bushmaster. It, yeah, you. Do. I don't know. I think I do. Uh, it's, the Bushmaster, and you don't need those long magazines of bullets. Uh, and it's it's just you know there's a whole lot of stupidity over here in the United States. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I mean, I, I'm sure you've got some stupid people over there too, but we, we really, uh, our stupid people are very outspoken. We, we call it, Tina, I call it the stupidencia. <laughs> and this is what, this is what our president has to deal with. Mm -hmm. and, and the, the people in our Congress that have half a brain have to deal with uh, yeah. Every day, yeah, it's it's a real challenge. I think you're right. I think all you can do is just detach and, and block out all of the ignorance and just I don't know, trudge forward. I don't know what else you can do. Uh, yeah. Well, if you think I, things are better here right now than mm -hmm. they were during the Bush administration, yeah, uh, that's a fact. Mm -hmm. But but there's still a lot of room for improvement. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's education that people need or just maybe people should travel more. You know, a lot of these people that I'm referring to as stupid have never really been anywhere outside of their hometown except for Disney World. <laughs> the one in Florida. Not even yeah. the one in Atlanta. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah. you know, the... the, the Travel is a very good way of educating yourself and 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 seeing, you know how how other governments and other countries uh, handle problems like this. Yeah. Uh, anyway, well, that's my opinion. it's a great opinion. I well, I also you know being in Germany, a lot of things here work really well. And Germany really has its shit together. It really, it really has it together in a lot of these major areas. But for example, if I go on Facebook and I mention the word Germany, how many Hitler re remarks do you think I get? It's Hitler and Nazi and Caroline. You're ignorant in this area. <laughs> okay. uh, well, you know, um, I know when I when when not so much now, but when we used to go to Germany back in. Back in the '70s, there was there were there was still a a, 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 a strong feeling that of shame mm. uh, amongst the younger people. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, speaking to uh, speaking to like the members of Kraftwerk and stu uh, uh, um, the members of CAN, yeah, they were really anxious to get beyond mm. that that feeling of shame. Yeah. What their what their country had done, yeah. and uh, I mean, they are beyond it now. They are, and and my daughter is twenty. Her generation, I think, they're just a whole different um, type of person. They're very demonstrative, and they're very loving, and all these you know all these old Nazi dinosaurs, they're just dying out, you know. And there's like there are a few left, and you see them on the street, <laughs> uh -huh. but yeah. they're almost gone. So when the last one finally bites the dust, I don't know. You know, it'll be yeah. a, it'll be a new tomorrow. <laughs> there, there, there will always there will always, I guess, be these uh, crazy people, but we have them here too. Yeah, I read this morning. I think it was on a thread on your Facebook page. Somebody asked you about your Are you German, Chris? Are you Irish? Like, yes, Chris of France is Irish. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Chris of France. Well, you, you, and you said your family's from the, what's it called? Alache and the Rennes area. Uh, Alsace Lorraine. Oh, that's it, Alsace. Uh, that, well, that was my father's yeah. father's side, mm-hmm. the France people. That, and, and they came to Abraham, France, and Jacob, France, came to America. Uh, before the American Revolution to oh, Philadelphia. Cool. Who, no, Abraham and Jacob, is that your, are they your great, great somebody? Oh, they're, they're, they're like great, 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 great. They're way back there. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, but the other side of my father's family came from the Isle of Jersey. Oh, cool, yeah. Is, you know, right in between England and France. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and my mom's people were all from, from England. Oh, that's cool. So, do you speak German at all? Or did you no, nine. Nine. There you go. That's that was beautiful. I'm not kleiner. That's a whole sentence of fluent German, buddy. <laughs> what? Tell me. Tell me about Chris and Tina. That interests me. Ah, I, I, I'm so happy you asked that. I love that, Chris and Tina. Because I saw yeah, you Chris, interviewed with someone, and the guy kept saying Chris and Tina, and you said. Yes, Chris und Tina. <laughs> like, you're missing the und, pal. <laughs> well, well, Tina and I have this dream. Yeah. I think it's about to come to be made real mm-hmm. in the in the coming year. But we have this dream that we will do something completely different than what we did with Talking Heads, completely different than what we did with Tom Tom Club. Yeah. And it will be electronic in nature, very small and portable. So that if we get a phone call, hey, could Chris and Untina play our party? We'll say, <laughs> yes, yeah. we, we get a ticket for, for two or three people instead of an airplane ticket for 10 people. You know? <laughs> cool. And we'll just go there and play the rock the party. Oh, cool. Well, what? So you got, you're going to play drums and bass and then have some... Uh, well, well, I think, I think, it, I think it would be... Um, uh, electronic slash DJ style, oh, kind of, kind of like real stripped down and just uh, you know, but 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 good for par- good party music. Oh my god, that sounds amazing! Yeah. yeah, are you guys? Are you? How do you? Do you have people like stop by and like want to come in and visit, or do you, are you left alone there where you live? Well, we we got a call the other day from. <laughs> um, a guy that's working with uh, Black Francis, you know, from the Pixies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He he wants to come do something with us. Oh, okay, so cool. We 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 get we get requests, but but really we're we're trying to. There was a time when we were producing other bands, and and we had some success at it, but but we really found that it's more fun to produce ourselves. Yeah, your own stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. It, as a producer for a band, your main thing is solving problems mm. whether they're musical problems or transportation problems or yeah. financial problems whatever yeah and uh i've i've at a certain point tina and i just said well let's let's concentrate on our own problems that's right yeah <laughs> and uh lord knows we have them <laughs> You are so cute. So I want to add, I'm not, I don't know anything about drumming. I've never drummed. I only understand guitar and piano. That's, those are the instruments that I know pretty well. But as a drummer, how much pressure is that for you? You are keeping the time for the whole, you know, everything, the whole feel. How is that, is that pressure for you? Or did you ever feel like, oh, this is, this is a big job? Or what does that feel like? Well, um, I'm very comfortable with it, mm-hmm. uh, but um, you're right. If the drummer messes up, mm-hmm. then, then every everybody notices. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I used to get really scared sometimes during the Stop Making Sense tour, mm-hmm. the tour that uh, was later made into a film mm-hmm. by Jonathan Demme. Yeah, um, that was that was a long show, and uh, uh, everything was played. Uh, all, most of the songs are. Pl- played at a very fast tempo and I used to get tendonitis in my uh-huh. arm. Yeah. And sometimes sometimes my arm would just like lock up. Oh, I'm like, oh my God, am I gonna get through this show or not? Oh my god. And I always did I always did. Um, it took about a year to get over that, a year of like just resting my arm after that. Oh, um, and uh, so now I'm now I'm careful. I I don't 
I don't do anything that doesn't feel comfortable mm -hmm. to me. Like if I, I mean, I don't play any parts that don't feel comfortable. Uh, I mean, I don't need no fancy parts. Mm -hmm. I just play what feels good. <laughs> Drum solo to <laughs> me, Chris Friends. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yes, there, I, I mean, I I think every musician feels some stress mm. um, when they're on stage uh, but some of us manage to cover it up with a big smile and nobody <laughs> notices I love being here now <laughs> well did you did you is there any way did you ever kind of start to daydream I mean it's hard just mentally staying <laughs> focused <laughs> <laughs> yes I did it all the time how did you call yourself back when you like, wander away Oops, oh, well, I'm playing well, for 20,000 people, oops. <laughs> I know. Um, well, yeah, I, I, you find yourself thinking about what you're going to have for dinner after the show. <laughs> but um, no, what we do is we just rehearse, rehearse, rehearse so that everything is really ingrained, not mm. just in your mind, but also in your muscles and mm. your physical self, so that so that if you tend to daydream or something, mm -hmm. you, you, you'll at a certain point you'll snap back and say, "Oh, oh. boy, <laughs> t time to hit the symbol now." <laughs> hey, I know. <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious! All right, so uh, so the new things come. Your C how's your CD doing? That thing that thing is as fresh and fun as anything the Tom Tom Club has done. I love it. Well, thank uh, you I love for it. It's really you. Uh, uh, you know, I I don't uh, even look at the figures anymore because mm -hmm. I mean you're talking to a guy. Our band used to sell like a couple of million records, and nobody does that anymore mm -hmm. except for maybe Rihanna or, or whoever, Lady Gaga, um, but Beyonce. Beyonce. <laughs> but, but we, yeah. We. Um, I don't even look at the sales figures. Mm. We have a manager who does that and who stays on top of everything very well for us. So mm. I try to just be the artiste. Ah, okay. That, now, well, tell me what you, how do you, what do you think about uh, mu the music industry today? What, is there something that you think is kind of lacking from, from uh, modern music or is there anything that's superfluous? Well, you know, uh, geez, that's a hard one. But there's a lot of stuff that I miss about the old days, mm -hmm. and when I could like walk over to Seventy Fourth Street in New York City and knock on the door and go in and sit down with Seymour Stein, who was the president of mm -hmm. our record company, and you know do a few lines. <laughs> you know, really, that you could do that. Uh, <laughs> Lines of what? <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and um, it, it, everything is much more corporate now. Fortunately, we, we have our own little label, which is distributed by another small label called Nassia Now, which is in turn distributed by Sony. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so we have, we try to keep it small, but then we do have a good distributor to mm -hmm. get our thing, our thick product into the stores. And yeah. Stuff. Um, but, but the old days of the record business, I miss them because it was all about the people and making friends. And, um, now, now, now things are much more dispassionate and much more corporate, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's not really my thing, but, but you got to deal with it if you want to. As as um, what's his name Hyman Roth told Al Pacino as the Godfather in The Godfather Part Two, <laughs> this is the business we have chosen. <laughs> Who's Hyman Roth? Is that the actor or is that the character? I don't remember. Well, it, it, that's the character. Oh, that's okay. supposed to be Meyer Lansky. Oh, okay. <laughs> I forget the name of the actor. He's a great little, little old guy, old Jewish guy with a frizzy hair. You know, 
This, this is, is the business we have chosen. <laughs> so that's how I feel about it. This is the business I have chosen. Yeah. I, I just want to make the most of it. Well, probably the digital age makes it a little, I mean, it, it kind of uh, really takes away the human element. That's kind of, it's difficult to do. I don't know. That gets lost with all the emailing and people don't really, I don't know. It's Yeah, I, I, I my, my phone, as far as business goes, my phone very rarely rings anymore when mm. for a business call. It's always by email. Yeah. And, um, you know, in some ways that's, that's good. Your phone isn't ringing off the hook all the time, mm. but in other ways it's, it used to be nice when I could, I could express myself to whoever it was like, what, are you crazy? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Well, um, so what's ne next? You have you're going to Japan in May, and then you're doing some concerts around Europe that you cannot announce yet because it's um, still under wraps. What they're, else? Yeah, you know, they're still in the planning stages, but that'll be the latter part of June and okay. uh, first half of July. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. Yeah. A anything else in the planning that you would like to share with us now? <laughs> well, just the. Chris and Tina. Chris and Tina. That is so cool. Do that voice again. Hey, Chris and Tina. <laughs> hey, hey, Chris and Tina, come and play our party. <laughs> come, play. <laughs> come and play our party. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Chris. It's so nice to sit and talk with you. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. I just think you're as sweet as can be, and I, I just so appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. The okay. feeling is mutual. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> you take care, and I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> okay, bye.